Hey there! Hello and welcome to the technical section of Biopande. I am delighted to introduce myself as sort of your very own Mahapande. Today, I am going to show you how to compare two protein sequences using dot plot. This analysis has two parts. First, we must download some protein sequences from public databases. We are going to use human and mouse muscle protein filamin A sequences. The second part is to perform the dot plot. There are multiple standalone software tools and online servers for this analysis. We are going to show you the use of dot matcher algorithm implemented in the emboss package. So, first of all, what is a dot plot? Dot plot is a sliding window algorithm that detects matching regions of two sequences. It is a powerful tool to identify and to visualize sequence similarities, repeats, inverted repeats, and inherent structures in two-dimensional plots. Let's start with a simple example. Two sequences of 12 nucleotide lengths. We simply want to plot the two sequences in a way so that we can compare their similarities and dissimilarities visually. Let us first put the two sequences along Cartesian x and y axis. The range of x and y axis are 12. So basically we have to fill up 12 by 12 that is 144 cells with some notation remarking a similarity. Let us use dots at the, as the remark. If any ith element of x axis matches with any jth element of the y axis, we put a dot. In this way, we fill all the cells along the diagonal. But wait, the comparison isn't complete yet. Something is missing, no? Yes. We have not filled all the cells yet. So let us continue. There you go. This is how the dot plot looks like after all the dots are placed. Now we basically have a pronounced diagonal with a symmetrical distribution of several points on both sides of it. The diagonal remarks the direct comparison of nucleotides of identical positions along the sequence. These dots appear as a distinct and continuous line. There are several points scattered on both sides of the diagonal and show no regular organization. These points can be assumed to represent random matches. When you are comparing two genes or two protein sequences, these off-diagonal dots often represent sequence repeats emerging from evolutionary insertions and duplications. Now remember the expression that everything that shines is not gold. Similarly, every dot in the plot does not necessarily represent something biologically meaningful. So a major task of computational biologists is to minimize this off-diagonal noise so that random matches can be separated from the true sequence repeats. One way to do so is to use a sequence window instead of individual characters. Let me show you an example. We use the codon table to translate the nucleotide sequences into amino acid sequences. So in this case, we are using a window size of three nucleotides. The method for dot plot is the same. If identical amino acids match, we put a dot. So the identity threshold in this case is 100%. Now see the original dot plot has reduced to a single dot along the diagonal. So you see guys how using the concept of window we can reduce the off diagonal noise in the dot plot. There is just one more conceptual aspect to discuss before I move on to the calculation method. That is the concept of identity threshold. Say you are comparing hemoglobin protein sequence from human and mouse. For any window size, you cannot expect the two sequences to match perfectly because hemoglobin protein sequence is different for two different species. That is why for a given window size, you must set an identity threshold above which you put a dot in the dot plot. See this example here. The lower the identity threshold, higher is the noise of your dot plot. Let us now do something by hand. We need two sequences. We go to Uniprot database. This is the largest database of all biological proteins. We go to advanced search. First, we select our protein name, which is 
filamin A. Next, we select organism, Homo sapiens. Now we hit the search button. It shows you documented filamin A sequences for human. Go to the entry page, scroll down and download the sequence in FASTA format. Now let me perform the same operation for mouse. Now we need our dot matcher program. It is implemented in the emboss package. The method is very simple. Two sequences are needed. You can either browse your sequence file or simply can copy and paste your sequences. Set your substitution matrix file. I am going to use Blossom62. Select stretch plot. Set the graph format to PNG. Go to advanced options. Set the window size to 100 and the identity threshold to 50%. Set the execution mode to interactive and hit the go button. A new window appears containing your plot. See, there is a continuous diagonal and several repeats. Why so many repeats? Because filamine contains 24 immunoglobulin domains of approximately 100 amino acid lengths. When we compare human and mouse filament sequences, these domain repeats are reflected in the off-diagonal regions of the dot plot. Now, let us reduce the identity threshold to 25%. You can see the lines are too many. Obviously, at lower identity threshold, you would always get more noisy off-diagonal lines. If you just elevate the identity threshold to 75%, this noise reduces. And if you elevate the identity threshold to 100%, the noise reduces even more and you will still see a high degree of sequence similarity. The final point of our discussion is visualizing evolutional divergence of protein sequences using dot plot. I have shown you two dot plots of filamine protein, one for human versus drosophila and another for human versus mouse, both for window size 100 and 75% identity threshold. You can see that human versus mouse comparison, both mammals, show much higher sequence similarity compared to that for human versus drosophila. As you can expect, higher sequence similarities is found for evolutionarily closely related species pairs. So this is all for now guys. For further information on bioinformatic techniques and calculation methods, please keep watching the other videos of Biopandit. Please feel free to contact us in biopandit at the gmail.com and in our Facebook page with suggestions, requests for videos and asking for technical help. If you like our videos, hit the like button and help others by sharing it. For more updates, please subscribe to our channel and like our Facebook page. Bye guys, see you soon.